Can you believe people have spent $160,000 in this little PC? This little PC features a Ryzen 7 processor and it can fit in the palm of our hands. And of course, in today's video, we're gonna see if it games, but first, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by My Heritage DNA, and today we're gonna be taking a DNA test to learn more about our heritage. We're very excited because My Heritage is super easy to do, and on top of that, we can find out our origin and also our family history. My Heritage also covers more regions than any other DNA test and will provide a percentage breakdown of your origins across 42 ethnicities in 2,114 geographic regions. All right, guys, I'm excited to see what is my ethnicity. Let's explore it. I'm a little bit scared. I have like no clue, really. 65.4% North and West European. Okay. 45.8% English. Cool. So I'm mainly made up of three different areas. It was awesome finding out all of the different percentages of nationality I am, especially the fact that I'm 2.2% Italian. So make sure to use our link and code down below if you wanna get free shipping. So if you guys wanna learn about your family history and origins, just like we did in today's video, definitely check that link in the description down below and use our code to get free shipping. So before Matt starts talking about this, I just wanna say, this is a really cool unboxing experience. This is the first time we've ever had a mini PC that came with a little mini carrying case. Yeah, shout out to Zulu. We think that's how we pronounce it with the X XR1 Max, they've reached out and sent us this mini PC. The model we have has a one terabyte SSD and 32 gigs of RAM, and during the Kickstarter, you can get it for $400, so definitely check the link down below. Okay, so we get a power adapter that, if I remember right, I think is like 95 watts. Yeah, it's 19 volt by 3.42 amps. You do the math. It ends up being between like 60 and 90 watts because I don't want to do real math. It's just so crazy. Small. This is a Ryzen 7 5800U, which is eight <laughs> cores and 16 threads. And if we can get it out of its carrying case. I just case. need to turn it over. It's it, it's oh. in there pretty tight, which I guess is a good thing. So I have just never, this is just wild. I've never seen a mini PC that is not only like shaped like this, but also just the way it's built. Yeah, it's very interestingly built. It does have an LCD display on here, which we'll show you guys when we turn it on. But again, with a eight core 16 threaded processor, we have 32 gigs of RAM, a one terabyte SSD. The Kickstarter price is actually really competitive at like $400 for a mini PC. This is very travel friendly, especially with this case. Yeah, this is this is definitely like one of the smallest, if not really the smallest mini PC I've ever seen. It's literally, this is the size of like a heat sink. I mean, that you'd put on a 50, 800X. Yeah, so what we have inside here also, I think they give you an HDMI cable because I think on their website as well, they sell a bundle with like a little portable display. So if you wanna have like a portable mini setup, like we've done here on the channel, like portable monitors, you can definitely do that. But really for us, I think the value here is can do some light gaming, can do some video editing. And also if it can do all that, it might be a better alternative for some people versus a laptop that may just wanna plug up to a monitor wherever they're going. And so the crazy part about this and the reason why we did kind of that sort of clickbaity thing of the uh, kickstart in the beginning is because you can get this PC with 32 gigs of RAM and dual channel, the 5800U, and obviously the Vega graphics and a one terabyte NVMe SSD for around $450, which is just mind boggling. I think a while ago we would have had to pay like 600 bucks for this. Uh, let's, I guess let's go over some of the ports. Yeah. So in the front here with our LCD display, we have one USB-C. We have what I believe to be a dual audio port. So probably input amp output, one USB-2, one USB-3. Um, and that just looks like a blank of some sort there. Not really sure what that's for. And then on the back, we have two USB-2s, two USB-3s. We have a, it looks like two, eight, yeah, two HDMI's out. For some reason, that top one just looks different. It does look know. a little different. It's weird. But yeah, two HDMI out, a Ethernet jack, and then we do just have like a standard barrel jack. That you know, that's honestly my only complaint so far. Is I'm like, I think with this wattage in this style power brick, I feel like we could get away with having USB C. But honestly, with the price of this thing, I, I can't complain too much. Is there much. USB three in the front? Because they yeah. did advertise this could support up the three displays. So I think that also functions oh, as the a C? display out. Yeah. USB C. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you could have three displays. Pretty which cool. Is pretty cool. So yeah, let's turn this thing on. And I will want to correct one thing. I do believe the display is actually an OLED display. We kept saying LCD. It is an OLED display. Uh -huh. So it's going to be, you know, good contrast there. So you can see, I believe, temperatures and usage on the CPU. I think that's what it shows on here. But we'll find out here in a second. That, that's, that's really cool. And is it actually, is it going through like a, what is that up top? Oh, it's the time. It's the time, yeah. <laughs> wow, that's so funny. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely a first. Um, and it just has this tiny little fan that's actually... I can actually feel the air coming out of the back here. Uh, now, one thing I wanna know is, do we get to open this up at some point? Yeah, I really wanna open it up because with a Ryzen 7 like this, I really wanna see how they achieve the thermal abilities to keep the thing nice and cool. And uh, at the price point, they must have done some 
cutting of corners maybe, but we're gonna open it up and find out. All right, so we're opening this bad boy up. Be very careful not to strip these bad boys out. Okay. I'm curious to see if we have to take anything else off, like the entire outer shell to like do upgrades and whatnot. So this just slide out now, question mark? Or are we gonna? It's probably, it's probably screwed in, I assume. It might, maybe I gotta try to push it out from the front or something. Oh wait, it comes oh, out this way. it slides out the front. Uh, okay, there we go. So, so this right here is our Wi-Fi adapter. It's actually Intel. It's an Intel AX210D2W, which is supposedly Wi-Fi 6E, which is really another really cool feature of this. So we use like a little tiny SSD. Like what size is that? Okay. Yeah, so this is a PCIe Gen 4x4 um, and it's a 10, 24 gigabytes, so one terabyte. I don't. I see Pyrite, but Pyrite. I'm not really sure if that's the brand. I do see the RAM. The RAM is upgradable. Yeah, and the brand is Herc. <laughs> I've never heard of Herc. Mr. Hercules. This is Mr. Hercules. Now what speed? So we're at 3200 megahertz dual channel. So this thing should should game pretty well, actually. Yeah, it has yeah. Vega A graphics, and we've been pretty happy with like the 5500U, like Ryzen 5 and the 5800U. They are capable. Um, I've had, we actually use like IADOs with 5800Us, and they can play games on lower settings. You're not gonna play Warzone and stuff like that, but you are capable of playing like Minecraft, Valorant, Fortnite and stuff. All right, so we're gonna put this thing back together. Shouldn't be too complicated, but we'll see if we get those robot cables back in. And then from there, we're obviously gonna test in some gaming. It's a Ryzen processor, and it's very tiny. We wanna see what the temperatures are like. We wanna see how I play some of our favorite games. And uh, then from there, we'll decide whether or not you should spend your hard earned money on this thing. Because so far on paper, it looks really cool, but is it actually gonna work when doing computer stuff? All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are playing Overwatch 2, and the settings that we are on is 920x1080 max FOV, and we got the frame rate unlocked, low settings. 60 FPS, definitely playable. Um, one thing that uh, Matt was mentioning was, you know, this, this is just a laptop APU, essentially. Um, and so different laptops, different thermals uh, can call for different wattages. And so this one we think is a little bit lower than normal. Yeah, it's the 5800U on its own will get, start at 15 watts, but most laptops, depending on what kind of laptop you have, it might boost up to like 20 watts or whatever, depending on the workload. But with this thing out of the box, it's pretty much limited to 15 watts. Um, from what I've seen, there's no software on the thing that allows you to customize uh, the wattage. There are third-party software you can install all similar to what we did with the Razer laptop a while ago, where you can um, auto adjust the clock speed and TDP, but that would be overclocking that you would need to do on your own. Uh, thermally, I think it could handle it. It's only getting like 52 degrees right now, and it's very quiet. So there is a lot of headroom, but I think they probably were just overcompensating for the fact of trying to keep this thing nice and cool because it's so small, but there is more wiggle room in our opinion. Powered up. Get over here, boy. Dank Doggo is done for. Crazy strat. Yes, crazy strats. <laughs> oh my god, it worked. It really worked. I'm super sane, super fast. Doing mm. devious things. Maybe try Fortnite Diva. Oh! Hey, easy dub. Look at that. Yeah, so what we'll do um, before we test like Fortnite and stuff, we'll go back to Overwatch, see if there's a difference. We're gonna try to go into the BIOS and see if there's anything. If you don't see any of that footage, then you know what? There wasn't anything to do and we're playing some Fortnite, but we're gonna see if there's any way we can push this thing a little bit further. All right, guys, we are running Overwatch 2 and uh, depending on how McAllister edits this, we actually already did this test, but we were noticing that we were only using 15 watts on the C the APU. Um, temps weren't really getting very high and it was just staying at like 1400 megahertz. Um, but as you can see now, we're actually like boosting and we're getting closer to like 100 FPS most of the time. We're currently just on low preset, max FOV 1080p. And I'll show you guys the settings in just a second here. Yeah, we are auto adjusting the resolution right now. Um, so it could be lowering it, but I don't see nearly as much like resolution adjustment on the fly as it was with the first run, which McAllister will show you on screen. I might even try turning that off. Yeah, we'll turn that off and run like native 1080p and see Ooh. what that does. But um, I will say, now that I'm looking at it, the, the TDP is slowly going down. <laughs> and it, you know, like look at the, the wattage, it's back to 15. Uh, what the heck? So it was running at 30 and now it's back to 15. So I'm wondering if they're, if the temperature readout's wrong and it's like actually throttling down because hmm. 
It's Maybe. back down to 15. It's definitely acting like it's throttling. <laughs> yeah, so that, that might be kind of concerning. Um, and something to keep in mind is, for some reason, I guess maybe under gaming loads, it can't sustain those clock speeds, but it, we didn't see any like spikes in temperatures, so that's the weird thing. No, we're in like the 50s right now, and it might be comfortable just thinking like the 70s or 80s, because most laptops can be running in like the 90 range on these kind of APUs. So there's definitely a lot of temperature and thermal headroom overall. Um, yeah, it's just weird. I don't know why I did that. It was running nice and smooth, and now it's back down to where it was. <laughs> we were getting almost 200 FPS in the firing range, but that was when we first turned it back on, so I yeah. guess it hadn't warmed up yet. Well, that's that. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just call it for now in Overwatch, try out another game, and then uh, maybe we'll do a little digging. All right, guys, we are back with some Fortnite gameplay on this little mini computer. And these are the settings we're running, performance settings, medium view distance, low textures. And I've run this a couple of times, by the way, just spoiler alert, but the performance is fine. It's not amazing. There's definitely some stutters. I wouldn't consider this a competitive Fortnite machine by any means, but it is definitely playable. Now, to answer the question that we've been kind of going over this entire time, um, is trying to figure out how to get the maximum performance out of this 5800U, and we do think we are getting that. Based on our other tests and diving into the BIOS and trying to unlock some settings, I really think this mini PC is at its maximum right now just because of the form factor and the fact that they have to be pretty aggressive to keep this thing nice and cool. Now, does it make games like Fortnite incredibly playable? In my opinion, it's not super playable, but if you are desperate enough at 1080p, you would have no problems playing this game. But you see in moments like this when we're dropping in, the frame rate does tank because it's trying to load in all those textures. And then from there, it's gonna struggle a bit to, well, maintain a 60 FPS experience. But it's not to say that if you were desperate enough and you wanted to try Fortnite that you couldn't play Fortnite on this little machine. Um, you definitely can, but I just wouldn't be going into competitive lobbies and trying to, you know, rank yourself up with this thing. But I, I still think think, regardless of the down clocking and everything that's going on with this little APU, the fact that we're even able to have a Ryzen 7 APU in such a small form factor just shows how far AMD Ryzen APUs have come in general, and the fact that they're incredibly impressive little uh, pieces of technology, and I'm really excited to see in the future when our DNA 2 uh, mobile APUs are, well, more prevalent and can be adapted into small form factors like this and cooled even more, man, those things would be very capable. And the fact that you could get like old gen Xbox level performance in the palm of your hands, like it's pretty, it's pretty cool to see where these APUs are going. And I'm really excited to see more and more products like this Zulu little mini PC, um, just trying to push the boundaries of compact computers. So I'm gonna go ahead and run around. Maybe I'll find somebody, maybe I won't. But you can see the FPS is, it's okay, but you can tell at moments, I'm definitely getting some stutters. The stutters are what gonna really throw you off if you're gonna be trying to play competitive Fortnite. See, stutter right there. The frame times do go up a bit, and that's just something you're gonna have to deal with if you are gonna play Fortnite on this device. But as you saw from the other benchmarks in Overwatch, you can definitely play other games. Um, you're just gonna have to have your expectations be a little bit reasonable. Where you at, gamer? Shoot me again. Oh, there you are, what's up? Yeah. Battle the bots. I guess I'll pretty much wrap it up for Fortnite. More than playable, 60 FPS with some stutters, but as I've gotten in later into the game on these performance settings, it is getting smoother and we are running on 80% render scale now. So uh, AAA titles you could play if you run at 720p with some FSR upscaling. Um, you'll have a little bit of flexibility there, but what we're gonna go ahead and do is we'll run Cinebench to show you guys um, the CPU multi-core performance to let you all determine how this thing would work for like video editing and stuff on the go. Um, and we'll also run Cyberpunk, which would be worst case scenario. Now I imagine that's probably not gonna work very well, but you guys will see it on low settings, ultra performance, just to see the limitations of this thing. And then from there, we'll just talk about the value proposition of this PC in the outro and just talk about why this thing should exist and how cool it is and how happy we are it kind of does exist. So let's go ahead and switch to that. 
All right, guys, we just got done benchmarking the world's smallest Ryzen mini PC. And overall, it was super cool. It definitely is a very unique design. They definitely have put a lot of work into this thing. The only thing that we didn't really like about it is the fact that it doesn't have a lot of user control, especially in the BIOS. We weren't even able to customize wattages or anything. And it's frustrating because we were seeing that APU go upwards of 25 to 30 watts, which is really where it should be at, especially with the temps we were seeing. They were very low, but every time we got in a game we'd be sitting at a cool 130 to 200 fps and then after a few minutes it just gets a little bit warm and it goes down to like 15 watts and really tanks the fps so yeah i think they're just being overly aggressive with all the temperature controls with this little mini pc so if they do open this thing up more for more user controlled stuff and yes we do know there's third-party software out there that you can get to really modify these things but we love to see for a device that has more potential have room to expand on that potential but Overall, it's really cool to see a Ryzen 7 PC in the palm of our hands. I mean, when first gen Ryzen came out, I would have never thought we could have this much power, eight cores and 16 threads at this size. So yeah, if you wanna shop around for this thing on the Kickstarter, which I highly suggest you do, because it's a great price, check the link in the description down below. It'll link you to the Kickstarter program. It's not an affiliate link or anything. Um, Zulu just sent this mini PC for us to review. We thought it was interesting, so we decided to review it. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other T YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one goodbye now this mini pc right here now that it's been fully tested benchmark you guys can see exactly how it performs will be for sale at pcbros.tech pcbros.tech we sell gaming pcs gaming laptops and so much more use that code toastybros2 and check out you'll save two percent your next purchase see you guys later bye, -bye. peace out